Welcome to this online interview by Project Cargo Weekly. Our special guest of honor today is Mr. Adam Lambden. He is the general manager at Hemisphere Freight Services based in Auckland, New Zealand. First and foremost, Adam, very welcome to this interview. Good morning. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me here. And as we just talked about before we went online here, fantastic that I can sit in Stockholm 11 hours away and it's evening here and it's early morning in New Zealand. So uh, once again, welcome. Yeah, no, 9 a.m. Monday here. So uh, the week is just kicking off. Uh, okay. But, you know, thank you. Appreciate it. No worries. Well, as I always do with my, shall we say, accused or interviewees, I always allow them a chance to elaborate a little bit about their career leading up to their current position. So, Adam, how, how come you're in, in, in logistics and not uh, sitting in a New Zealand bank or, or in the government? How come you're in logistics? <laughs> uh, look, my, my story in, in, in freight forwarding and international logistics is, is probably quite typical of a lot of people that enter the industry. Um, I, I, as I was finishing high school, um, 17 years old, I was unsure about where I was going to head, what I was going to do, whether it was going to be international travel or or get straight into straight into work. Um, I ended up uh, having a discussion with my careers advisor, um, mm -hmm. and and she suggested. I take part in a diploma in international shipping and logistics, uh, mm -hmm. which was run by one of the um, universities here in Auckland. Um, and to be honest, I didn't know anything about about the industry. Um, okay. Didn't really know anything at all. So um, I, I thought, yeah, look, I'll give it a shot. Um, so yeah, I was 18 years old, um, started a diploma in international shipping and logistics. Mm -hmm. And um, pretty much from there, it, it kind of just led me into the industry. My um, When I finished my diploma, I applied for my first job in, in international logistics, mm -hmm. which happened to be with Hemisphere. Uh, oh, okay. And I've been there ever since. Yeah, so uh, 18 years uh, now oh. I've been with Hemisphere, um, which which was a pretty good stint. But um, yeah, uh, look, I entered the industry because I, I wasn't really sure where, where I was heading or, or what mm. I really wanted to do. Um, it, it kind of caught my interest. Um, although, interestingly, the 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 diploma I completed, um, translating that into actual work when it came to it, uh, it was it was a very different story. So um, yeah. Yeah, uh, as you can probably as you can probably expect, but yeah, um, I, I started off as an export um, operator, a junior, okay. when I was about uh, 19, 20 years old, um, okay. and um, yeah, uh, it's been the same ever since. Okay, it's a indeed a long and distinguished career. One might say that you are staying, shall we say, uh, in the southern hemisphere, so so to speak, both That's, physically exactly and right. logistically. That's right? Exactly right. Yeah, exactly <laughs> in, right. Interesting, Adam. Yeah, no, no, it's, uh, and the one thing's for sure, shipping always, uh, you never learn enough and you never know it all. So uh, even right. 18 years, I'm I'm sure you still have another <laughs> good similar uh, amount of years to go. Uh, still, oh, learning. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> we're, we're, we're learning all the time. I'm learning all the time. Um, you know, I've, I've done a lot of different things within the business, um, within Hemisphere's business. Um, yeah. And yeah, I, I'm still learning to this day. Okay. So um, okay. it's it's fantastic, really. I, I, I wouldn't want it any other way. Good good to hear. What can you tell us, uh, tell our viewers about Hemisphere Freight? I mean, uh, what, what's, when, when did it, when did it, was the company established? Uh, who were behind it? And how about sure. your footprint in, in New Zealand and elsewhere? Sure. Um, so yeah, the, the company was started in 1998. So mm -hmm. um, we're into our 25th or 26th year now. I think we're into our 26th year. Mm -hmm. um, it was started by, it's a privately owned company, um, started by uh, the, the two guys, the two directors who who still run it uh, to mm -hmm. this day. So uh, John Crook, uh, mm -hmm. he's one of the directors uh, based here in Auckland in okay. New Zealand yeah. and Blaine Caulfield, uh, who's based in Sydney in Australia. Okay. Um, so they, they both started, they both came from the industry um, mm -hmm. after working at you know, various boarding companies um, in, in their early careers. And 
yeah, when they were, you know, of an age where they decided it was time to maybe start thinking about, you know, where, where their careers were going to be heading, um, they came together and, mm -hmm. and uh, started Hemisphere. Um, okay. cool. And it's, it's kind of just been a little beast rolling on ever, ever since then. Um, mm -hmm. So Hemisphere is an NVOCC consolidator. So we pack uh, consolidation containers inbound and outbound from New okay. Zealand. Um, the business started off packing export consolidations to the Pacific Islands, specifically Fiji. Um, mm. And from there, it it really just grew. And um, we've introduced more and more trades as the years have gone on um, mm -hmm. uh, to now where, I mean, we're, we're definitely not the biggest. We're, we're a medium-sized business here. In New Zealand, um, and you know we we compete with the likes of of the big NVOCCs here, mm -hmm. um, but you know we we carry our own weight and and we have really strong um, services internationally. Um, mm -hmm. So obviously we're we're a consolidator, um, so we we pack inbound and out our, our consoles, but we handle LCL um, cargo, FCL cargo, air freight cargo, um, uh, project cargo, oh. uh, as well as, um, we're, we're probably the, one of the largest, um, domestic freight forwarders. So we move a lot of containers up mm -hmm. and down the country, um, oh, yeah. on behalf of our own retail clients and on behalf of, of some of our wholesale, um, customers as well. So, mm -hmm. um, we kind of cover a very broad, um, range of, of, I guess of the logistics supply chain. Um, okay. Yeah. But but ultimately the the business was um you know our our, our tagline is forward thinking freight, yeah. and we try and apply that to everything that we do um within the business. So okay. we try to be innovative. We try to be pr progressive. Um, you know we we're engaged with um IT development mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. as much as we possibly can automation um really trying to look for ways to ensure you know our, our, our footprint within the market remains strong yeah. um and obviously holding on to um our customer base while while trying to okay. to bring more and more on okay. yeah so so as an nbocc uh, basically you may have quite a few freight for waters as your customers too i take it right we do we do, we do. So, I mean, we're a neutral NVOCC, so we work with wholesale and retail customers. Um, okay. we, we, you know, we have a, I guess we have a name in the market for, you know, remaining as, as absolutely neutral as possible. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we do have we do have a broad range of, of other freight forwarders who who move their cargo through Hemisphere as well. Okay, cool. Yeah, because uh, you know it's 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 the new mantra nowadays for at least some of the ship owners seem to be we can do it all and we don't need the forwarder. So that they want to do door to door, at least they claim to be. So uh, they will go straight to your customers. So when you mention that you're neutral and you will protect whoever gives you cargo, uh, that's a, a vote of trust for you. I mean, uh, I, yeah. I, ta I take it that you will, if the, if a forwarder comes to you and give give you their cargo, you will support them back, won't you? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's all about um, you know building and maintaining those relationships. So. Um, you know, we, we we'll look at every customer and every shipment um, as it sort of comes and, and assess it on its merits. Um, yeah. But for the most part, you know, we you know we remain absolutely neutral. We 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 give support back to the people that support us. Um, you just touched on the shipping lines trying to enter the forwarding market, and yeah, yeah look, we're seeing it. Um, it's it, it's for us in New Zealand. It's it's relatively unsuccessful. I mean, yeah, they have services that they can offer, and mm -hmm. and certainly with their online platforms, you know, they they promote those services. But but I guess what they're missing is is <laughs> the freight forwarding now, the experience, the yeah. the how to, um, yeah, exactly. and you know the the large global uh, mentality of shipping companies. Yeah. Well, they can't apply that to the small retail customers in New Zealand who, no. 
need somebody to be able to pick up the phone and explain to them why their shipment is five days late and the customs clearance has been held up or whatever it may be. Um, yeah. uh, so, uh, 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 sorry, I was just about to address that. Yes, you are not interested in talking to a call center in India because they save money on that. You want to have a local service nearby you. I mean, uh, you, you, yeah. you you said exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, like we, we, we saw through COVID, um, a lot of the large, well, not not just the large shipping lines, but essentially the shipping lines become mm. somewhat faceless in a way. Oh, yeah. And um, it was very challenging um, in order for us to, you know, manage things for our clients through those processes and yeah. those, those times because we, we were lacking on information. And essentially as, as freight forwarders, mm. um, yeah. We we communicate information. It, it's it's what we do. So we rely so heavily on that. Um, and when, when we saw a shift away from it, um, mm. we kind of had to, you know, flex and be dynamic about the way that we found information and and provided solutions to to customers. So um, it, you know, if anything, it, we actually came out of the other side of it stronger than yeah. we'd ever been because. Yeah. We took the control back in a way, and yeah, good, um, good. you know, tried tried to make things, I guess, make things our own rather yeah. than be reliant upon um, you know the, the the big machines. Really, yeah. now I think we can say that uh, thank God COVID is over, and at least the arrogance now has uh, come down to the ground. Uh, the nose have come down to the ground again now, especially with the rates plummeting yeah. and uh, the. Hundreds of uh, new ships entering service when the when the, the cargo uh, volume is low, uh, and I heard from some other interviewees they told me that when the shipping line invites you for lunch, you know they are hungry. So yeah, uh... <laughs> yeah. That, well that's that's exactly right. And and look, I, I don't want to I don't want to paint every shipping line with the same brush because there are sure. a lot of sure. border friendly shipping lines out there. And 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 you know to be fair, uh, even the ones which aren't, you know, we still have. A working relationship with them because as much as you know they might be trying to enter our market they still have a place just like we do and yeah. and and we will utilize that wherever we possibly can if it yeah. suits the needs of the customer so i guess yeah we just have to be we have to be flexible we have to be dynamic and and we kind of just um we, we we move with the times really i i'll, I'll be yeah. I'll be I'll be surprised if if the shipping lines can really get a strong foothold in, in the forwarding space. I mean, they may have some customers that it works for, mm -hmm. but um, certainly from what we have seen, it, it it will be very challenging for them to, I guess, take over that space. Yeah, yeah. Let, 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 let's hope it remains like that. Yeah, that's right. uh, another question I think for many of our viewers who, who are may, maybe not so familiar with New Zealand, you have a North Island and, and, and a South Island, of course. And I remember during a visit to your beautiful country, somebody told me that you have a West Island called Australia. But that, that, we do. <laughs> that's a, a good joke. But how, how do you move containers between the North and the South? Uh, and t tell us a little bit about intermodal in New Zealand? Is it a ferry service? Is there a sea service? Uh, tell us about that. Yeah, so I mentioned before um, about our, our domestic shipping presence mm. in, in New Zealand, and there are um, a number of ways of moving freight up and down the country and, and across both islands. Um, mm. New Zealand's a pretty challenging place to move freight around. Um, mm. You know, we've got a lot of mountains um it's, it's the there's not a lot of fantastic roads and 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 some parts of the country can be very very challenging to move freight around although you know we we managed to do it but um predominantly in the past it's been a rail and road service okay. um however um you know in the last decade however long it may have been coastal shipping has yeah. become a massive massive part of the way cargo was moved around New Zealand mm -hmm. and um we back when I guess it, it sort of started we we were one of the first and and probably this is why our domestic shipping presence remains so strong we were one of the first to start utilizing those services wherever possible as an oh. alternative to road and rail okay um so obviously with with um sea freight you you have a consideration for a longer transit time yeah. um and you know potentially it, it may not always be the best um, option for most customers but 
once you start to explain to your customers how the um, domestic uh, coastal shipping service works um, and, and they can start planning their own production runs and their own cargo readiness to meet cutoff dates and meet schedules, it, it actually becomes just the new normal. Okay. And, um, and and we've found uh, it's, it's, it's a fantastic option. Generally speaking, it's more cost effective mm -hmm. um, and... Yeah, you, you can move you can move a high volume of, of containers at, at, at any given time. We have a dedicated uh, coastal shipping line in okay. New Zealand okay. uh, called Pacifica Shipping. Okay. Um, so they have two vessels which essentially run up and down the country all through the main ports. So, um, so that, that's like a domestic, uh, because, you know, in many countries, they won't allow foreign ship owners to run the, the domestic services. So that's a New Zealand-owned company, or is it a foreign-owned, or is it... So it's, it's part of the Swire Shipping Group. Ah, okay, um, got it. But it's a, it's a dedicated New Zealand coastal shipping line. Okay. So got all it. that Pacifica shipping do is move... Uh, containers up and down the country and, and across both islands. Um, okay. So they have two vessels which have um, slightly different port rotations, um, okay. but essentially all the main ports throughout the North Island and the South Island, um, they they service. So um, we utilize that service, uh, you know, every single week. Um, Interesting. You know, Interesting. Uh, and hundreds, the, hundreds, of, hundreds of containers move up and down the country with us every single week. Okay. Um, all, all the international carriers as well, they they have a coastal offering. Okay. Um, although um, with the international carriers, it, it can be somewhat unreliable because you know predominantly that they're, they're international. So they you know we're hamstrung by um, you know the the ports that they've come from, the other countries that they've come from, and the other countries that they're going to. So right. any service delays, port rotations, or anything like that that happens with the international carriers can impact. Sure. Their coastal services, um, whereas with the Pacifica service, it's uh, it's dedicated. So yeah. um, it's yeah. um, and yeah. uh, also for the viewers, just to understand the traditional way, if we if we look away from from uh, the dedicated coastal service, the, for example, if you want to move a container from uh, shall we say Auckland to the South Island, what would uh, in traditional routes it would be rail down to where and then ferry across? Or can you explain how yeah, it, it would be railed? So so it would either be it would be road freight at the local pickup um, mm -hmm. within the North Island um, or the South Island, um, yeah. and then it would be a rail service to the bottom of the North Island, mm -hmm. um, where where those rail carriages are uh, loaded onto ferries. Mm -hmm. and ferried across to the South Island, and then the rail continues from the top of the South Island to whichever destination. Uh, okay, so the, so, okay, so so the rail wagons go on board the ferry? Correct. Uh, ah, okay, so it's not transloaded. It's not like... Uh, no. Uh, okay, got it. Okay, li like we had uh, between Denmark and Sweden in the old days, where the train uh, could kind of <laughs> go on to the ferry direct, and now that doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's... Uh, look, the... The piece of water um, mm -hmm. between the north and the South Island is is notoriously um, I, I don't know I don't know if I'll use the word dangerous, but it's it's a it's a, <laughs> yeah it, it can be, and so that can impact the rail services, and and it oh, often yeah. does. Yeah. Um, so r rail was obviously you know at, at one time was the only way to move freight around um, between the north and the South Island. Um, yeah. But yeah, now without without dedicated coastal service, it, it, it makes things a lot easier. It just gives people options. Um, yeah, you know, sometimes, sometimes rail is is preferable. Um, but it, yeah, it, it all depends on the customer's needs, really. Got it, got it. And uh, and what's your headcount in Hemisphere? Um, and your your off you you have your main office in Auckland, or how how is your yeah? Um, so work? we have our two offices one 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 in Auckland in New Zealand and one in Sydney in Australia. So okay. um, our, our Auckland office. You know, essentials essentially handles everything um, from a New Zealand perspective, mm -hmm. um, as well as uh, being a transshipment hub to the Pacific Islands. Um, okay. In in our Auckland office, we've got twenty one staff here. Um, okay. We have another staff member who's remote. He's based in the South Island in Christchurch. Oh, yeah. um, and in our Australian office in Sydney, we have I think we're up to eleven people in our in our Sydney office um, okay. at the moment. And, that Sydney office again manages and handles all of the Australian operations. So, okay. so, I mean, it, there, there was a time where you used to need to have an office in in every location. I mean, yeah. those 
those days are long gone. So, you know, we have a team based in Sydney, which services all the main ports in Australia. Funnily enough, the majority of our Australian customers are based in Melbourne, not in Sydney. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it's sort of just the way it works. But, okay. um, yeah, so I guess around um, somewhere between 30 and 35 all up. Okay, um, very good, very yeah. good. And uh, you mentioned the Pacific Islands, uh, Fiji for one. Uh, I suppose there are a few more islands out there in that huge uh, o- ocean next door to you. Uh, yes. t- t- tell our viewers about uh, some of the Pacific Islands where you've handled shipments to and from. Yeah, so um, we pack our consolidation containers to Suva and Lautoka, which are, which are mm-hmm. both in Fiji, mm-hmm. um, Numea, oh, uh, yeah. New Caledonia. Um, Interesting. Papaiti, which is in um, French Polynesia. Yeah. Uh, Apia in Samoa. Um, okay. And yeah, there's, there's many, many more um, throughout the Pacific. Um, okay. um, there's, there's Tonga. Um, but yeah. we, we kind of service, we service them all. Um, okay. So one of the things that MSB does is an MVOCC, we have um, weekly inbound containers from you know all parts of the world, um, although predominantly China and Asia. Yeah, sure. And we move a lot of transshipment cargo from those parts of the world through Auckland mm-hmm. to the rest of the Pacific. So oh, very similar to Singapore or Hong Kong being a hub for the rest of the world, New Zealand is a hub to the Pacific. Right, um, so right. We, we deconsolidate our inbound and we mm-hmm. reload our export um, outbound. You might say that you are a hub. You are a hub for the holiday spots. I suppose that's right. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, and and you know a lot of, a lot of the cargo that we move up there is is essentially for that. A lot of these Pacific islands, they oh. you know it, their tourism is is where they make their money. So yeah, sure. Um, and 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 what brings revenue into their country. So, um, it's all about uh construction you know mm. uh, new ho- new hotels new resorts um right. so <laughs> but yeah there's a lot of that moving up there <laughs> but i just recall I, I visited fiji once in my very young days i had a honeymoon there with uh, one of my ex-wives so and of course wow. we flew we, we we flew via auckland and then air pacific oh, yeah. to, to fiji <laughs> so uh, it was yeah. uh what, what a place i mean some of the islands outside the main island of fiji incredible yeah it's yeah it is it's a fantastic place and we've we've had a presence um you yeah. know in fiji you know since since the company was started so yeah. um we have really strong partners in in fiji who we work with and you know, some of our customers are still working with us 25 years later. Um, nice. So, yeah, in, in the Pacific, um, that's it's not necessarily an unheard of thing, but it's pretty rare. You know, the freight rates into the Pacific are, are very competitive. You have, you know, everybody wants the cheapest possible price at, at yeah. all times. And so it kind of fuels, um, you know, a lot of shifting around of business. Yeah. Um, but some of our, some of our Pacific customers who, who booked, you know, with us before anyone else, they still send their cargo up to Fiji with us. So yeah. Um, and Fiji, um, they almost beat England this morning in the Rugby World Cup. Oh, so I'll... <laughs> oh great. <laughs> uh, then, uh, as I said, the world is changing, right? <laughs> I was rollicking for the Fijians for sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> great, Adam. No, it, it, it's, it sounds uh, sounds very interesting. And, and uh, well, not to mention your own beautiful country. I mean, uh, who has not seen uh, Lord of the Rings? I mean, it's just uh, yeah. Yeah. Your, your country is awesome. I've never visited the South Island. It's uh, on my bucket list, but I've been to the North Island. I mean... That's only, uh, let's say, a, a taste or an appetizer. I heard. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you, you sure. really, yeah. you you really have something in the way of tourism yourself. I would say. <laughs> the the South Island is, it's crazy when, when you do get the chance to travel there. It's 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 like you're actually in a different country. It's very yeah. different um, look, feel, different terrain. It's um, yeah. it's pretty special and and uh, and an amazing amazing place. Yeah, yeah. fantastic yeah. food and wine as well. So make sure you get down there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I I heard about Marlboro. Is it Marlboro? Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. That, that's that that's right at the top of the South Island. But oh. um, yes, Central Otago. Um, okay, Otago. Yeah, it's a fantastic, fantastic part of the country to visit. I I, I have to make a note of that. I I have to arrange some uh, personal interview in the near future. I think. 
<laughs> for sure. Yeah, no, we can hold a meeting there. We can hold a meeting there. <laughs> exactly. Sounds good, Adam. Adam, uh, really, really interesting. And and as you said, you 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 have a versatile company there. You even uh, can handle oversized equipment. And many of our viewers are interested in project cargoes and stuff like that. So you do have experience uh, on things that are not containerizable, so to speak, right? Yeah, that's right. So um, I guess one thing that we've always done is never shy away from any kind of project mm. work in fact mm. we kind of welcome it and relish it um mm -hmm. it brings a challenge um it, it brings experience it brings knowledge and and really what mm. it does is when you start handling project cargo you know whether it be over dimensional or out of gauge or even if it's just a block of work for x number of months um you, you know mm. you have to you have to learn how to do these things yeah and when the next opportunity comes around, as far as project work is concerned, you know you just feel that much more confident that you can that you can really handle it. Um, yeah. So, we've always been involved in project work um, mm -hmm. up until very recently when we joined this network. Mm -hmm. We, you know, we've had to rely a lot on our partners from around the world who may not necessarily have had the same i guess experience that we have had which mm -hmm. has proved challenging um so you know joining this group joining this network mm -hmm. is going to mean really positive things for us in fact we've only been you know members for such a short time but we've already engaged with a number of of, of the members um okay, cool. and we've got quite a few projects on the go at the moment um okay. so i know some of the partners that i've been speaking to um, they will see they will see quite a bit coming through from hemisphere um in the in in the near future so yeah we we kind of we embrace it we tackle it with everything we've got um you know i've been involved in in the business for 18 years john mm -hmm. who's based in auckland with me he he kind of has the same approach as me when it comes to project stuff and we just we just jump at it um mm -hmm. Jordan Hazelwood, who's who's um his current position within the business is is, is our export manager. He's also been yeah. with the business for eighteen years, okay. but he is also heavily involved in any project work that we do. Okay. Um, so, you know, between the three of us in, in New Zealand, we have you know a ton of experience, and um, good. It, it, it it makes things it makes things a little bit easier because we you know, we talk to each other all the time and, yeah. and we're always sort of bouncing ideas off of each other. So yeah, we, 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 we jump at it. We love it. Yeah. I'm very, very pleased to hear that Adam. And I think also our viewers will be very interested to, to know more about you after this interview. I think I want to, to conclude by, by, by saying many, many thanks Adam for answering my questions uh, very directly and, and clearly. And, and uh, I think you've done uh, uh, really good for, for our viewers to understand who, who are Hemisphere. So thank you very much, Adam. Yeah, no problem. Thank you so much. Look, again, I just would say thank you for letting us, you know, be, be a part of the team. Um, we're here to talk to anyone who needs it, um, even if it's just, you know, for general advice about New Zealand and the way things work. Um, and, and yeah, certainly um, our, our other members will will see a lot more engagement from Hemisphere in, in the near future. You're very welcome. And I think I would like to say now to all our listeners, viewers and readers from around the world, this was yet another great interview by Project Cargo Weekly. Our very special guest of honor today has been Mr. Adam Landin, the General Manager at Hemisphere Freight Services based in Auckland, New Zealand, a very versatile, competent and hardworking company involved in NVOCC, in and out, Project Cargos and all kinds of related logistics movement to and from this beautiful country very far away, including Australia, of course. So for me, thank you very much and do stay tuned for more interviews with Project Cargo Weekly in the near future. Thank you.